If you've been gardening for a while, you've probably heard the same advice on repeat. Make compost, feed your soil, and your plants will thrive. And while composting is undeniably a great practice, I've discovered something that consistently outperforms traditional compost in both speed and results. It's a method that's simpler, faster, and often more powerful at restoring soil life than the classic compost pile. And once I started using it, I honestly began to see composting as just a stepping stone because this approach takes soil building to a whole new level. Welcome back to Soil Sage Chronicles. In this article, I want to take you behind the scenes of a method I rely on in my own garden fermented soil amendments, especially Bokashi and anaerobic compost teas. Don't worry if those terms sound a little intimidating right now. By the time you finish reading, you'll not only understand why this method beats traditional composting every time, but you'll also know exactly how to try it in your own garden. Don't get me wrong, I still respect compost. It's one of the first things that got me hooked on soil health. But if we're being honest, composting has some serious limitations. First, it takes a long time. You pile up your kitchen scraps, garden waste, maybe some manure, and then you wait. If you're diligent about turning it, keeping the pile moist, and balancing carbon with nitrogen, you might get usable compost in three to six months. But let's face it, most of us don't always have the time, space, or perfect conditions. Second, a lot of nutrients are actually lost in the composting process. As organic matter breaks down aerobically, carbon escapes as carbon dioxide, and nitrogen escapes as ammonia or nitrous oxide. That means the finished product, while good, isn't nearly as nutrient-dense as the materials you started with. And finally, compost is a bulk soil amendment, not a concentrated inoculant. It feeds your soil slowly, but it doesn't supercharge microbial life the way living ferments can. The method that beats composting hands down is fermentation, particularly through Bokashi and fermented plant extracts or FPEs. Think of it as composting's smarter, faster cousin. Instead of waiting months for microbes to break things down, fermentation uses specialized microbes, primarily lactic acid bacteria and yeasts, to pre-digest organic matter in just a couple of weeks. The process locks in nutrients rather than letting them gas off into the air. It also creates an environment where beneficial microbes multiply rapidly, giving you a concentrated, biologically active amendment that not only feeds your soil, but inoculates it with life. Bokashi is the most practical example of this method, and it's where I recommend gardeners start. Originating in Japan, Bokashi uses bran, often wheat or rice bran, inoculated with effective microorganisms, or EM, to ferment food waste. Here's how it works. Instead of tossing scraps into a compost pile, you layer them in a sealed bucket with Bokashi bran. Because it's airtight, the process is anaerobic and the microbes go to work fermenting the material rather than rotting it. After two to three weeks, you're left with a bucket full of pre-digested pickled food waste. At this stage, it doesn't look like soil yet, but here's the beauty. Once you bury it in your garden, Soil microbes finish the job incredibly quickly. Within just a few weeks your soil is enriched with nutrients and beneficial microbial communities. Unlike traditional compost, Bokashi handles meat, dairy, and oily foods without a problem. It's virtually odorless if done right, and it works in small spaces. Best of all, nothing gets wasted. Nutrients are preserved, not lost. So, another branch of fermentation gardening is creating fermented plant extracts, sometimes known as KNF inputs in Korean natural farming. Instead of composting plants like comfrey, nettle, or seaweed, you actually ferment them in sugar water. Over the course of about a week, microbes break down the plant tissues and release their nutrients into the liquid. What you end up with is this powerful nutrient-rich concentrate that you can dilute and use as a foliar spray or soil drench. It's not just any fertilizer, it's living fertilizer filled with microbes and bioavailable nutrients that your plants can take up immediately. For example, a fermented comfrey extract delivers potassium and growth hormones just when your tomatoes are setting fruit. A nettle ferment gives you an iron-rich boost that leafy greens absolutely love. And because it's microbial-based, it supports soil life instead of just feeding plants in isolation. You know, what really sets fermentation apart from composting is the microbial advantage. Fermentation amplifies beneficial microbes in a way compost rarely can. 
Think of it like this. Compost is a slow-release vitamin. It works eventually, but it's mild. Fermentation is like a probiotic shot. It floods your soil with living organisms that immediately begin interacting with the root zone, suppressing pathogens, and stimulating plant growth. When I started adding fermented amendments to my garden, I noticed a real difference. Stronger seedlings, fewer pest problems, and plants that seemed more resilient to stress. The great news is, you don't need fancy equipment or a science lab to get started. Here's the simple roadmap I use in my own garden. For bokashi, grab a bokashi bucket. You can buy one or make your own with an airtight lid and spigot. Layer your food scraps with bokashi bran until the bucket is full. Let it ferment for two to three weeks, then bury the material in a trench in your garden or add it to a worm bin. For fermented plant extracts, chop up your chosen plant material and pack it in a jar with brown sugar in equal weight. Cover it loosely and let it ferment for about a week, stirring occasionally. Then, strain the liquid, dilute it 1 to 500 in water, and apply it to your plants. That's it. With a little practice, these methods will become second nature. When I compare composting with fermentation side by side, the winner is clear. Bokashi and fermented extracts are, well, just plain faster, delivering results in weeks instead of months. They're richer since nutrients are preserved and not lost. More versatile, too, because they handle food scraps that composting just can't. And honestly, they're microbially superior, absolutely teeming with beneficial organisms. Plus, they're space-saving, so they work in small gardens, apartments, or even balconies. Does that mean compost is obsolete? Not entirely. Compost still has value for improving soil texture and water-holding capacity. But if you're looking for maximum nutrient density and microbial life, fermentation beats it every time. Here at Soil Sage Chronicles, my mission is to share not just the how, but the why behind better gardening practices. Fermentation may not be as mainstream as composting, but it's the future of soil health. By adopting these methods, you'll not only save time and effort, you'll also give your plants the kind of living soil they crave. And trust me, once you see how quickly your soil transforms with these methods, you'll never look at compost piles the same way again. Gardening is all about learning, experimenting, and finding what works best in your unique patch of soil. For me, and for countless gardeners who've discovered the power of fermentation, bokashi and fermented extracts have proven to be faster, richer, and more effective than traditional composting. So if you've been frustrated with slow compost piles or limited garden space, give fermentation a try. Start small, watch the results, and see how your soil responds. And if you found this article helpful, don't keep it to yourself share it with a fellow gardener who could use a soil breakthrough. And don't forget to subscribe to Soil Sage Chronicles for more soil wisdom, practical tips, and hands-on methods to take your garden to the next level. Because at the end of the day, healthy soil isn't just the foundation of a great garden, it's the heartbeat of the entire ecosystem we're part of.